is my Gansai Tambi 36 color uh, swatch video. I'm going to put the color swatches in the lid and I think I'll save my color cookbook video swatches for another video so you can watch that one if you want to. I am going to do a, sort of a first impression um, talk here about these paints but um, stay tuned to my channel because I will do uh, I do paint a mandala with these paints um, for demonstration purposes and I'm also going to do a video uh, swatching these in my color cookbook which will be a bit better there's a bit glare a bit of a glare um, going here so I think I'll make a more true to color maybe better lighting or something uh, in my color cookbook and in that video I will give some information that people are looking for I've been in contact with Kuratake uh, company and she's getting back to me on the light fastness of these paints um, as far as the archival quality um, and some artists that want that aren't just doing crafting or stamping want to know that how long um, the painting will last um, my first impression of these paints are I love them they're creamy and nice to use they're satisfying in that the pigment they're very highly pigmented um, the quality compared to uh, say Windsor and Newton um, Cotman set is I kind of prefer using these uh, the Cotman set or traditional watercolors are a little more um, translucent and so you sort of traditional watercolor you do more glazes you do one stroke and then you sort of let it or you do one layer and then you let it dry and then you can build up the color and that's what gives a luminous quality to a painting um, I mean not always not all watercolors are I just got some schminky set which are German watercolors and they are absolutely stunning I'm <laughs> I love them I'm gonna do a color cookbook on those too um, but my first impression of these Kuritake ones are that they are more if you enjoy working with acrylics or you like that sort of opaque more opaque look and very satisfying you know color payload then you'll love these um, they're a good starter set because the uh, price is not bad. You know, this, this set of 36 is under $50. And um, so, that set is, uh, <clears throat> the thing I noticed about this set um, is that you know I would be comparing the reds and the oranges and then the yellows and I would think to myself well why did they put in you know three to five sort of colors that really look very similar uh, why wouldn't they put more variation in the colors And that only seemed to happen with the reds. And there are non-traditional colors in this set, such as that brown, whereas in traditional watercolors, you're gonna want, you know, a sepia color and a good ochre. That yellow, second one on the right down is sort of like a yellow ochre, but. So whether you're looking to, um, you know buy this or a traditional watercolor set I would say you could if you're just starting out or you just want one set or whatever um, to go ahead and get this one and fill it fill out your set maybe with another couple of colors standalone colors or, or a small Cotman set or like a travel set of traditional colors that have the sepia in it maybe a Payne's gray and you know the, the traditional ones that um, that you need that most watercolorists use but the distinctive factor of these is that they are 
sort of on the opaque side, like that teal green, um, or that sort of sea foamish green color, and even this green, I'm, I'm finding, even that olive green, a lot of the colors have that sort of milky quality to them, which I don't find in my other traditional watercolor sets. So this is definitely a different set, and, um, and I love the fact that it takes three days to make one pan and then the whole company can only make, um, the whole factory can only make one color, or three colors at a time. So I'm all for uh, quality products and hand crafting, I think that's really nice. Oh, and I forgot to mention one of the best things that I love and that, that I actually got this set for is because one of the, the biggest factors in making a painting is choosing your color. A lot of beginners make the mistake of trying to use, and I make the mistake too, of getting all excited about every single color and having this palette out and wanting to use every color in your painting. And uh, you can certainly do that, but it's the chances of you creating a cacophony of conflicting colors is high. So, um, I, the well, personally, I think the best paintings are um, when you distill things down, just like in design. It's a design principle. When you the best logos and the best um, images are ones where you can distill things down to the least. Uh, amount of information as you can to get your your point across in an image and that's the most powerful of course there's ornate designs with tons of intricacies yes there's that you know in baroque and architecture and you can get really complicated but um, I find especially in the crafting world the simplest uh, designs are the best and so that works with colors too so you want to stick with um, you know, personally, my favorite are analogous colors where you have the, you know, you stay with reds and pinks and maybe throw in one green or something like that. So what I really love about these is you can take out each of these, the pans. So you choose your colors, maybe swatch them out on a piece of paper and take out five colors and then put the set away so that you're not tempted to use, um, the rest of the colors and that's exactly what I did on my mandala I used oranges and teals and I'll show you I'm gonna be posting that video shortly I wanted to make my force myself to stay within that color range and so I love that you can remove the pans and that they're nice and big and chunky and you can take them out and you can place your color uh, palette in front of you and you don't have to you can keep it simple and then, of course, the last thing I'll mention in this quick overview is the, um, hello, the silver and the yellowish gold, and then, hello, that rose gold. Oh my gosh, that is beautiful. So, I, I embellished my, um, in my mandala, I put a little bit of that silver in the sea foam in my mandala. So, you'll see that in the upcoming video. And uh, so I'll just, I've spoken through about half this video, so I'll just leave the rest for you to watch the color swatches. And stay tuned for a few more videos. I'm not done with the Kuritake Gansai Tambi watercolor reviews.
And there you have it. I hope you enjoyed it. Like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you did, thanks.